All right. Welcome, everyone. Welcome to our uh, next uh, podcast. I have a very special guest here, Shahid Aziz. Um, He is going to talk about Smile Bangladesh. But prior to doing so, let's go over our disclaimer here. This show is not a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis or treatment. The show is for informational purposes only. Treatment and results may be may vary based on the circumstances, situation, and medical judgment. After appropriate discussion, always seek the advice of your surgeon or other qualified health provider with any questions that you may have regarding your medical care. Never disregard professional medical advice or delay seeking advice because of something in the show. With that being said, I'm going to hand it over to our other two gents. Here we go. <laughs> well, um, th- thanks for that uh, frenetic introduction, Dr. Pichella. Um <laughs> So uh, today's theme, uh, we're following on a theme that we have uh, had before, which is about service and giving back. And previously, we have uh, featured a project that was near and dear to Dr. Pacella's heart. Um, And today, we're going to talk about a project that Dr. Rhee and I have had some involvement with. And so with that, I'm really, really excited to introduce our guest, who is Dr. Shahid Aziz. A little background about Shahid. He is a professor of oral and maxillofacial surgery and plastic and reconstructive surgery at Rutgers uh, University in New Jersey. He received his... Uh, his dental degree from Harvard University and his medical degree from Columbia University. An interesting fact, Shahid is only one of six American-trained oral and maxillofacial surgeons to actually be inducted as a fellow of the Royal College of Surgeons in Edinburgh. His clinical expertise is in actually uh, complex maxillofacial trauma as well as orthognathic surgery. But today we're going to talk about um, his passion project. So, Um, Dr. Aziz, much like Dr. Rhee and myself, is a first-generation Asian-American. He is um, Bangladeshi. um, And in 2006, um, he founded the nonprofit Smile Bangladesh. Um, He uh, took his first team of surgeons, nurses, anesthesiologists to Bangladesh in 2006, where they engaged in cleft lip and uh, palate surgery. And since then, I believe he's led about 23 missions. Is that right, uh, Dr. Aziz? Um, Uh, 24 total. 24 missions, I'm sorry. Um, got Got that from the website, so. You know, so that's 23. <laughs> um, but it's done over 1,500 cleft lip, cleft lip and palate surgeries on both adults and children. And, and I and Dr. Ree have had the privilege to go on a few of these trips. And so, uh, uh, Dr. Aziz, thank you very much for joining us today. Um, and um, just curious about your inspiration. How does a, a, a man that grows up in the United States, never been to Bangladesh, decide that he wants to treat his ancestral homeland um of this, uh, just to, to, to give back there. What, what made you decide to start this organization? Well, I think, you know, um, first of all, thank you for having me. Um, you know, um, it's a real pleasure to be on the show and, uh, to talk about something that as, uh, Dr. Jajurkar noted is something very close and close to my heart. Uh, an answer to that question, basically it comes down to, this is where I'm from. This is where my father is from. And it's something that he um, asked me to do um, uh, before he passed, is to never forget uh, where you came from. And that's kind of the nidus of why we started this organization. Okay. And um, um, over the years, you've actually grown the organization considerably. Um, What challenges have you found sort of, first five years relative to the last five years of small Bangladesh? Like what, what, what are the challenges that you're dealing with in the current time frame that you didn't have when you first started? You know, I think, uh, there are challenges here in the States and there are challenges, uh, in Bangladesh. I think, um, you know, when you look at from the state side challenges, it's recruiting, um, the right people. Um, and, and the reason I say that is, you know, as the two Sams know, um, uh, because both of them have traveled with me on multiple missions and Sam Ree actually traveled with me, um, on the very first one. Um, you know, you're, you have to bring the right group of people because you're in a very remote part of the world and you want to get along and you want to have everyone on the same page. And, uh, it gets very uncomfortable when you have, people who may not fit into the group and um you know so so uh that's part of the challenge on the american side the other challenge is funding you know doing a lot of fundraising and it's something that 
I do around year round is, is constant fundraising. And, um, you know, the, the missions cost now about 40,000 a piece to cover, you know, most of our expenses, um, not including airfare. Uh, we do try to cover, uh, the non-surgeon, uh, non-doctor airfares for the nursing staff and things like that. Um, so we're constantly fundraising because it's important that we cover all of our expenses and the patients that we treat um, are not incurring any expenses. So those are the two big issues uh, in the States. I guess the third issue is transportation and in, as far as getting uh, equipment uh, to Bangladesh. But we've sort of overcome that because now we are actually storing most of our equipment um, in Bangladesh itself. But prior, we were bringing it. And um, that was a little bit of a pain. Um, in country, in Bangladesh, the biggest uh, hurdles are overcoming some of the politics uh, that you have to deal with. Um, the government is constantly changing, and I've met with multiple health ministers over the years uh, to try to, you know, um, uh, further our uh, mission. Um, um, there's a lot of uh, politics and you have to deal with that. Um, there's a lot of uh, egos and you have to be very careful about not stepping on toes with the local surgeons. Um, and finally, you know, just planning accordingly. And we're lucky now that we've been doing this now for uh, over 16 years, 24 missions under the belt, um, that we have a core group of sites that we now go to that are used to us, used to our needs. And we have a really terrific um, uh, executive director in Christina Rosario. Christina is a Bangladeshi, um, and she ran a large NGO in Bangladesh prior to emigrating to the States about uh, uh, 12 years ago. And uh, uh, she basically handles all of our logistics on the ground and goes ahead of us and um, is constantly making sure that, um, you know, we are um, well planned. So planning, I think, is the biggest issue, uh, the, the key to success um, prior to arriving. You know, I thought um, many of our viewers really can't even picture what Bangladesh looks like. And so you were kind enough to put together some slides, which I'm going to load up on my screen here, um, and was hoping that you could sort of run through and kind of talk about Smile Bangladesh um, and, sure. you know, why Bangladesh? Why not? You know, sure. what is it about sure. the country? So can you guys sure, see sure. Shahid slides here okay? Uh, not yet. So. Yes. yes. There uh, we go. Hold on. Okay. Yep. It says that it's okay. Perfect. Yep. Yep. Good. Good. So, so, um, and, 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 and even, and even before you start that, I did want to ask you, let me ask you one question, Shahid, and that's, yeah. um, Rutgers is on a five game, uh, losing streak to Michigan <laughs> after a thrilling <laughs> game last night, which went in the triple overtime as, uh, as a professor at Rutgers, I just yeah. kind of wanted you to yeah. know what you think about the state of the annual beatdown of Rutgers to the university of Michigan. <laughs> well, you know, uh, it's, it's, it, 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 <laughs> annual it, beatdown. It, 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 it would look <laughs> even worse. It would look even worse if Michigan lost to Rutgers. <laughs> so it's kind of a given. Uh, although Michigan uh, did lose to Rutgers, I think the very first time they ever played in the Big Ten, because I was actually at that game. But uh, last night was close. I mean, you have two really, uh, two really bad, two really bad programs. Teams. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, <laughs> duking it out, and it was actually entertaining. I actually did stay up till almost one o'clock in the morning and finish it. So uh, it was disappointing, but is what it is. Is what it is. Michigan should be doing a lot better. Yeah, I think we can agree. Two bad teams, but Rutgers is still worse. So, all right. Uh, small <laughs> <Yeah. with that. laughs> I will. I will. I will agree with that. Oh. Unfortunately, it's rough. Yeah. Rough situation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, you know, I I I like this slide. Um, it's 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 a great telling slide because this is a mother and daughter uh, and they are in a site that the two Sams know well, which is in Kulna. Uh, which is on the western border of Bangladesh, about um, uh, uh, an hour from Calcutta in, in India. And um, this is a 20-year-old mother and a three-year-old daughter. And, you know, it tells you, one, that there's a need for services in rural Bangladesh because you have a 20-year-old woman with an unrepaired, you know, lip. Uh, and you have the daughter with an unrepaired lip. But it also tells you there's a large genetic component 
uh, associated um, in Bangladesh and in, in general in, in clefting around the world there's a large uh, genetic component. But this slide sort of tells you why there's a need uh, in the rural parts of Bangladesh and that's why I like this slide so much. Correct. Correct. Yeah. So, you know, rural Bangladeshis, they don't necessarily have access to care. So that's what's so important about what we do. You know, and again, we're basically um, based out of my basement. You know, we're a small organization um, with big goals, uh, but we are 501c3. So any donation is tax deductible. And our goal is basically to provide uh, surgical and medical care to individuals with facial cleft deformities and facial deformities uh, in Bangladesh and around the world. But our, obviously, our focus is Bangladesh, and that's our website. So please take a minute to check it out uh, if you have a chance. Uh, for those of you who don't know where Bangladesh is, basically it's um, a small nation. It's about the size of Idaho, uh, but it does have 162 million people in it, which is half the uh, population of the U.S. So it's a very densely populated country. Um, and, uh, you know, we've been fortunate. We've done 24 missions. Um, we obviously were on a pandemic hold uh, for 2020. Uh, normally we go every March and every November. Um, and we were literally a day or two away from leaving in March for our 25th mission when um, the pandemic uh, sort of entered the States and uh, we made a decision as a board to uh, abort simply because we were simply worried about traveling and coming back into the U.S. at the time. But um, our next mission hopefully is in 2021, maybe, or definitely November of 2021, um, you know, and uh, we've treated 1,600 patients over the last um you know, 14 years. So I think it's not, uh, I never thought we would get to this, this point. Um, and it's really, um, thanks to a lot of people that, uh, including the two Sams, including a lot of other people that we were able to achieve what we've achieved. And I think, uh, we have a bright future. No worries. Uh, so again, why Bangladesh? It's a country of 62 million people. It's estimated there are about 300,000 uh, individuals with unrepaired cleft deformities. And there's only about 30 surgeons or so in the country with formal training, uh, which is 10,000 patients per surgeon. Um, in the U.S., there's about one in a thousand births. Um, individuals with clefts. And in Bangladesh, it's a little higher, um, significantly higher, really. It's up to one in 500, so twice. And it's used, usually caused by either genetics, as I mentioned before, um, nutritional de deficiencies. We've found that, you know, folate deficiency is the one thing we know um, that if you have prenatal folate deficiency is associated with clefting consanguinity. So one of the, the issues in rural Bangladesh is first cousins do marry. That's a tradition in a lot of rural communities throughout the world uh, to keep money in the family. And as a result, you know, uh, you're um, sharing a common gene pool, which is uh, increasing the risk of birth defects. And finally uh, in rural Bangladesh, uh, girls get married extremely young uh, and they, their bodies are probably not ready for delivering children. And so there is an increased risk of uh, birth defects in, the, in that population as well. So this is our typical team, um, you know, and this varies from site to site that we go. But, you know, when, when Sam Ree and I first started, it was just the two of us and we went uh, to, uh, um, a, a hospital ship. Uh, Bangladesh is full of rivers. And so we actually took, landed in Dhaka, took a seaplane um, to a rural part of the country, landed next to the boat. And it was just two of us running two ORs, um, uh, you know, but over the course of, and again, that was 2006, over the course of, um, you know, the last 14 years, we've evolved to uh, running four to up to four uh, OR tables, depending on the site, meaning we'd bring four attending surgeons, uh, as well as appropriate number of anesthesiologists. We always bring more anesthesiologists than we need, uh, because, uh, you know, it's, it's, 
really, where is the risk? Uh, it's with the anesthesia. And um, we like to have more anesthesiologists, pediatric anesthesiologists available. Uh, and knock on wood, we've never had any anesthetic issues. Um, sometimes a pediatrician comes, but more often the local host uh, provides us with a pediatrician or a primary care physician to pre-screen the patients. Uh, we do bring nursing staff, specifically a circulating nurse, as well as uh, one or two um, uh, recovery room nurses, uh, depending on the site and the size of, uh, of the, the uh, mission that we're, we're, we're undertaking. Uh, Christina is our um, administrator, and she's, I always call her the MVP of Smile Bangladesh because, um, you know, she plans everything, and it's literally planned minute to minute. Uh, for the week to 10 days that each mission lasts. And, um, you know, well planning, a well planned trip is a successful trip. And I think what's really uh, important to me is that we bring residents. And we've brought oral maxillofacial and plastic surgical residents on these trips. Um, and it's a really great experience for them because they're working one on one with. Uh, um, you know, an attending surgeon, and it's an intense experience. Over the course of four to five days, you know, they're doing 20 to 30, you know, cleft surgeries. It's something that they probably wouldn't do in a full year of their training, maybe even their whole training experience. And they have the opportunity to work one-on-one -on -one with an attending, you know, um, maxillofacial or plastic surgeon doing a lip, uh, doing a palate, and, uh, and they learn a heck of a lot. But more importantly, you know, um, you want to try to inspire them to realize that, you know, um, they're becoming surgeons and they have the opportunity to make the world a better place. And so it doesn't really matter what they do as long as they give back. And I'm, and I'm hopeful that, um, you know, during their careers, they'll see what, you know, the four of us have done uh, as far, for example, as far as, you know, um, uh, giving back and inspire them to do so. And and I know that there are several residents who have gone on to do their own thing over the years, and that's always uh, a great thing. Um, I wanted to tell you a little bit about our our patients. Um, I like uh, this picture in particular because there's a bunch of kids waiting on the hospital ship that Sam Marie and I were on, uh, and the one kid inadvertently is giving me the bird while I'm taking the picture. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me the, giving me the I don't picture, think that was inadvertent, so was, but okay. Yeah. yeah. Hey, what what sure. makes you think it's an inadvertent? Either, <laughs> yeah, I think he was like, who's this Mexican guy, you know, <laughs> taking a picture? But anyway, uh, it, it tells you they all line up and uh, uh, wait for our uh, wait for their surgery. Uh, and again, you know, um, you can keep going, Sam. Um, you know, the, just some pictures again of, of, uh, some of our patients. Um, this picture is courtesy of Bruce Byers who's a photographer in New York city. Um, and this, uh, this picture I particularly like, um, by going to multiple sites, when rotating the sites, we tend to see the same patients for their lip surgery initially and then their palate surgery. So this is a year apart. This is a young girl who on the left, uh, just moments before entering the OR for her lip repair, and then on the right, um, the morning after her palate repair, uh, which is why she has a little bit of a bloody nose. But you can see how, you know, doing that lip repair the year prior uh, – you know, you have to look closely, you know, I mean, the four of us would obviously know that something was done, but the average person probably wouldn't pick up on the fact that she had something done. And, you know, a 60 to 90 minute procedure changes this person's life forever. And, and that's why doing surgery is so profound. Um, interestingly, with Bangladesh, you have a lot of older patients. And as was mentioned earlier, a lot of people don't have a access to care. And this is just a bunch, literally a bunch of teenagers uh, with uh, lip, dis lip uh, uh, disorders just waiting to be treated. Uh, and so we often are treating adult-sized patients, so teenagers, um, moving on to um, adult patients. Uh, you can, yeah, and this is a, uh, a 20... I think 22 year old that treated a while ago and you can appreciate as the uh, patient gets older, the 
primary uh, lip deformity gets wider, uh, becomes much more anesthetic. And again, in our surgery, this is him literally right after surgery. In our surgery, uh, you can see the big difference that um, that's achieved. And you can see the you can appreciate you're not just affecting the lip, but you're also bringing the nose back together. Uh, this is a 60-year-old um, woman from the hill tracks of Bangladesh right on the Myanmar border, which is why she has that little more um, Asian look to her. Um, um, and, um, you know, again, she never had op an opportunity to have her lip repaired. She's 60 years old, and then she wandered in and uh, had our uh, team take care of her lip. So, you know, again, um, it just tells you in parts of the world, such as Bangladesh, there are a lot of people who just don't have access or even realize they, they can get this repaired. This is... Um, um, our oldest patient, a 68-year-old uh, farmer um, who literally just wandered into one of our camps. He has a bilateral cleft lip. And um, you can go to the, the um, next slide, Sam. Um, it's, um, it's amazing how you had to counsel him for tobacco cessation and get a preoperative EKG. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which is not, not typical in the U.S. for our cleft patients. Yeah, all right. So, uh, and again, um, this is uh, just him going to sleep, which is literally why on the OR table, uh, going to sleep. And this is him in, uh, you know, recovery. Uh, and again, you can appreciate, you know, the, uh, the difference that uh, we've made for him, um, why organizations like Spinal Bangladesh are so important. And, uh, you know, the nice kind of caveat to this story is he really was looking to get married. And he did apparently get married um, later on uh, at the age of 68 or 69. But, you know, good for him. Um, so one of the things about um, clefts is it's more than just lips and palates. Um, it affects actually the facial skeleton and it affects how your jaws are positioned. And so one of the things over the last five years that we've sort of evolved into, in addition to doing lip and palate repairs, is... In the main, in the larger cities, uh, Dhaka, Chittagong, we've um, uh, teamed up with um, the Bangladeshi Society of Oral and Maxillofacial Surgeons to develop what's called an orthognathic program, uh, meaning that we're treating individuals um, with clefts um, and even non-clefts who have what's known as skeletal malocclusions or, or underbites, overbites, things like that. Um, cleft patients tend to have um, because of the star, scar formation from the powder uh, lip repair, uh, they tend to have a restriction of the growth of the maxilla, and it results in um, maxillary hypoplasia, an underbite, etc. So they need to have, um, in the States, for example, they'll have orthognathic surgery or repositioning of their jaws um, by the time they're teenagers. And this often doesn't happen in uh, more um, underserved parts of the world. So one of our initiatives now, in addition to um, doing um, cleft surgery, uh, lip and palate surgery, is working with local surgeons to develop the orthognathic component. And it's something that um, isn't really done in general in Bangladesh. So this is sort of an exciting new chapter for our organization. Um, I just want to make a note that when we do travel to all these different sites, we do take local surgeons with us and work with the local surgeons because it's, education is an important component of what we do. And this is uh, sort of an evolution of, um, you know, small Bangladesh. In fact, there's one site um, in a town called Cox Bazaar where uh, they really basically told us a few years ago they don't really need us anymore because they're comfortable, you know, after five missions there, they're, they're comf their local surgeons are comfortable taking care of whatever they need to take care of. Uh, and while it's not, um, you know, it was a little disappointing in the sense that it was a great site, but it's, uh, it's rewarding because we've gotten, uh, achieved our goal in that site. So a couple of years ago, we started doing orthognathic surgery and, and we, uh, this was a much more complicated than your lip and palate repair. Uh, it requires a lot of instrumentation, a lot of equipment, and it has to be done in a formal hospital. A lot of uh, the cleft camps that we did in the more rural areas were done in more rural uh, facilities um, that were safe, 
but um, you know they're not great for very involved intricate surgeries. Um, and we've done two orthognathic uh, workshops so far. The first one was in 2018. It was an educational workshop um, with lectures followed by um, uh uh, cadaver surgery, um, which basically I had a, like a GoPro on my head or they were filming me uh, doing uh, osteotomies on cadavers uh, in Bangladesh, which uh, was an interesting experience. Um, so that was in 2018. Yeah, please. Yep. And these are just a couple of pictures of uh, that first symposium. This was done at East West Medical College, which is right outside of uh, Dhaka. Um, it's actually where in the in the part of Dhaka where all the garment factories are, which is interesting. And this is they set up, a, you know, again, it's in a uh, it's in a uh, medical and dental school facility. Uh, so they had a large lecture hall. And uh, next slide. Um had about 200 people in attendance um, from the local dental community um, listening to our team talk about different um, aspects to uh, orthognathic surgery. Next slide, Sam. And this again is, uh, you know, the cadaver part where they're filming the actual osteotomies. I'm talking into a microphone and explaining things. And in another room, people are watching and asking questions. So that was the first uh, the first time that we did this a couple of years ago. And then last a year ago, last November, uh, we segued into more formal um, actual live surgical demonstration. Um, in, and this was arranged in conjunction with the Bangladeshi Association of Orland Maxillofacial Surgeons. So uh, we did three uh, orthognathic surgeries. Uh, during this trip, including this young man, who was a young man with a cleft lip and palate deformity, as well as a severe um, underbite, uh, which you can see from this photo. Um, keep going, Sam. And this is just, yep, no worries. And this is his, uh, you can see him from his uh, repose, smiling, and side view. In the side view, you can obviously really see the the jaw deformity um, that he has. Keep going. And again, this is his uh, x-ray. It's called lateral ceph. Uh, you can really appreciate the underbite. Um, and you can imagine how difficult it must be to function, to eat with something like this. And this is, uh, uh, again, a different x-ray of uh, his um, uh, deformity. And so uh, the trip prior to uh, the actual surgery, so when I was there in March of 2019, I had a chance to work this uh, young man up, um, uh, you know, evaluate him. I had a set of dental casts made, got some x-rays on him and uh, took it got an actual CT scan done. So I brought all that information back with me um, to the States uh, so that I could plan his surgery out. Uh, next. Now, orthognathic surgery is done... Uh, orthognathic surgery is done in the States now through um, surgical planning. So it's done virtually now. Um, um, you don't have to really stay in the lab and do, you know, pour up models and make splints. You actually can do it by a 3d printing and planning it, um, um, digitally. And that's what we did, um, here. And this is when we got back to the States, we took a CT scan, figured out what kind of osteotomies we were going to do, uh, repositioned his upper and lower jaws. And from that made splints, um, that would guide us in, intraoperatively. Um, we had, uh, donations from some of the companies that I work with, um, to allow this to happen, specifically 3d systems, medical modeling, who made the splints for us, um, free of charge. And, uh, striker cranium maxillofacial who uh, donated the power system that we brought to Bangladesh as well as the plates and screws. Next slide, Sam. 
So this is again in twenty uh, in twenty November twenty nineteen. Uh, we were at Dhaka Dental College and we did three orthognathic surgeries uh, over two days. And um, for this young man's surgery, the cleft orthognathic surgery, uh, obviously we had um, cameras filming us and we were mic'd up. And so in the adjacent room, there were people watching and asking us, um, questions. Um, you know, unique experience. I'm not used to having people right on top of me while I operate. Um, but it was, uh, well worthwhile. And again, I was actually very impressed how they, uh, arranged everything. Uh, but they were able to, you know, uh, from an AV standpoint, uh, really make it work. So they had, us on film, had us mic'd, and then in an adjacent conference room, uh, they set it up so that um, you know people could ask us questions and watch as we did the surgery. Next slide, Sam. Um, and again, this is. Uh, I think it'll take a minute to line up, but you can see um, pre and post. Um, uh, slides uh for some reason it's not lined up i'm not quite sure why but um yeah yeah okay and so part of what we also did was um um we had a day-long symposium uh with um you know a couple couple uh um uh, individuals from the states that I brought with me uh, from left to right uh, is Dr. Jose Marchena, uh, who the Sams know, who's vice president of Smile Bangladesh, who's a maxillofacial surgeon at the University of Texas, Houston. Uh, Jessica Lee, who um, at the time was a craniofacial fellow in West Virginia. Um, uh, and the two people in the mid middle, uh, Padma Mukherjee is a uh, uh, orthodontist from Rutgers and Greg Jacob is a colleague of mine uh, from New Jersey who's a maxillofacial surgeon and then myself. And so we basically had a symposium uh, discussing surgery with the Bangladeshi Oral Surgery Society talking about ortho orthodontic care uh, and preparation. So it was a really day-long comprehensive um, thing that we did in addition to uh, uh, the surgery. Uh, these are just a few uh, slides from uh, over the years. Um, the slide on the left is uh, Sam Rhee and I uh, during, I think, that first mission um, to Bangladesh in 2006 when we were both young without gray hair. And uh, this is Sam again uh, uh, with a, in recovery, uh, looking at one of his patients. Um, and again, this is uh, Sam Jajurakar, uh looking perplexed on the left. Um, and uh, <laughs> uh, and then what, one of the things that uh, I really uh, liked is, and, you know, Smile Bangladesh is a family. We're, we are a family. It's very important to me. You know, we have a core group of people, including the two Sams that are involved in the organization. And we are a family. And I always extend to everyone if they have children you know teenagers who can who are interested in coming and also are uh you know they have to be um able to travel the distances that we travel and and you don't sleep a lot on these missions uh you get there there's a huge time change you hit the ground running uh and so they have to be obviously mature enough but uh you know sam brought his son kai multiple times with us and kai was a huge asset to uh to um our missions he was would play with the kids help out in the recovery room and, and it was really um a source of uh you know real um uh, positive energy for everyone. Uh, so I was really happy that Kai uh, came aboard and, and hopefully we'll see him again. And I know that, you know, I'm going to, when my kids are a little older, I'm going to bring them as well. Um, so, you know, but it just tells you that we are a big family and uh, uh, I'm really pleased um, not just to be talking about this today, but to, you know, to just amaze how well we've we've evolved. And this is just a picture of the three of us in uh, Cox Bazaar, probably about 10 years ago, would be my guess. So, 
and um yeah and that's that's really it so again that's sort of a broad overview of what we do and then again i'm just amazed uh how we've evolved i would never have imagined um you know in 2006 we'd get to where we are now it's uh what a what an amazing uh amazing organization Shahad. thank you for mm, showing us so. um yeah. do you um so tell me um you know Obviously, the the types of surgeries you're doing require some additional um, follow up after the case, and I, I know you you mentioned that uh, you you guys are really taking a priority to teach local surgeons, um, and you know, uh, ha- has that changed over the years? I mean, what's your comfort level and the type of cases that you're uh, choosing and doing? Yeah, you know, that's a great question, Sal. Um, I will tell you that you know we do we do bring local surgeons. Um, to train and also we ask them to follow up um, you know and with technology it's very easy to Skype or FaceTime when there are issues um, they always will follow up with us so we are able to keep a pretty close eye on how things um, transpire you know and and uh, uh, so far knock on wood we haven't really had any major issues uh, in the last 14 years that's great I have to say, um, Shahid, that the organization I've been involved with from the beginning and it's, you know, having um, and it it the thing I would say is it does everything the right way. I, you know, one of the things that these charitable organizations need to do is come from the heart, which certainly um, Smile Bangladesh has always uh, come from the heart. It serves a population that really needs care. And uh, as we know, Bangladesh has gone through many trials and tribulations over the years, and it's grown tremendously, but it's a place where care is, is desperately needed more than more so than I would say most places in the world. And so if you were looking to a place to, to help, uh, that would be one place. And the group uh, that you've put together over the years have been uh, completely dedicated. They've uh, really sort of worked with the local um, surgeons in a super positive way. Every time I go, I really enjoy um, interacting with um, the surgeons that we meet and that we talk to and all the other um, people. And it's a really an educational experience. It's not a, you know, drop in, operate and leave uh, situation by any means. And, um, you know, the longevity of Smile Bangladesh has meant that you have some very fantastic uh, relationships. You've, you've educated them, you, you have symposiums and, you know, if you're going to go someplace and do work, that's, that's the right way to do it. And lastly, just, um, the people that you bring, I remember, and I know, um, you know, at Michigan, when we went, um, our, need for our, our desire for service was kindled by Dr. Bob Gilman and, and a lot of the trips that he initially did when we were residents. And the fact that you bring residents, that you, um, bring young people, um, you are fostering a sense of, um, service and the, the realization that <clears throat> your skills and what you can do can help everyone. And it doesn't have, it can be, um, in your neighborhood, it can be people that you bring to your um, area, just like uh, Fresh Start Surgical Gifts does for Sal, um, or you can travel halfway around the world. And um, I would say every trip I've gone on has uh, changed me um, in some significant positive way. Um, I've become a much better and bigger person because of it. And at the same time, I've learned a tremendous amount. And that's the sort of um, endeavor that um, – has been amazing to watch from the beginning all the way to, to now. Yeah. Thank you, Sam. Um, that means a lot. And again, you know, um, both, both of the Sams have been on our board and, um, have been really involved. Um, we actually, Sam Ree and I, uh, were at Columbia together and with a third person who's now passed in Ray uh, you know, the three of us sort of came up with this idea to go, uh, and and start small Bangladesh, um, and it's it's been really um, uh, it's really great, you know. And and for me, on top of that, I actually believe it or not, um, my father died when I was 16, so I never had um, 
an opportunity to go to Bangladesh until we started Smile Bangladesh. So, I mean, Sam Rio, remember the first time that I was meeting my family, you know, he came to uh, my family's house. And the funniest thing I remember about that story is, you know, their Bangladeshi families are massive. I have literally 50 first cousins in Bangladesh. Um, and every time I go, I meet a new one. And they're probably about, we go to my uncle's house in Dhaka and we pull up Sam and I, and uh, there are probably 30 or 40 people outside. And Sam made the unfortunate decision to get out of the car first. And so they think Sam is me. <laughs> so I just see him surrounded and his little hand in the air pointing at me. <laughs> so that was kind of funny. Uh, but, it, you know, it, it, it for me also, I get to see family. And everyone, I mean, the two Sams have met all of my family out there. And so it's it's uh, it's a lot of fun on many levels. And Sal, you have an open invitation. You know, you're always welcome to come. Oh, thank you. As well. I would love to join so, you. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I will say, you know, one of the things that you you mentioned two things um, that really stuck out, and I want the viewers to think about, which is Bangladesh is the size of Idaho, but the population is 160 million people, which is about half the population of the U.S. So just the density of people is overwhelming, and most of our viewers will never see Bangladesh, but the kindness of the people as well. So many of these people have so little, and they are so grateful that people are willing to travel halfway across the world to care for them, that these are some of the most life affirming positive experiences that I will have throughout my life. And every, every time that I get to go, it's quite a privilege and it's all due to Shahid's efforts and Christina's efforts. So on behalf of Sam and me and the people of Bangladesh, thank you very much. Shahid. We appreciate the trips and we <laughs> appreciate you. your time today. Yeah. Well, thank you for giving me the forum to talk about it. I really appreciate it.